I love to get up and go to work every day. Um, it drives my family crazy, my wife, my brothers. You know, they all have jobs that they like, but they don't love to do it. When we're fishing a billfish tournament, I can't sleep two days before that because I'm so excited about going to work. Uh, very few people get to do something that they enjoy so much and get paid for it. We typically fish six or seven tournaments a year. Um, the average tournament is between five and ten thousand dollar entry fee and then they have optional cash divisions which is a Calcutta and you can end up spending anywhere from twenty to forty thousand additional in those divisions so you may have fifty thousand dollars bet on the weekend. I started on deck and then I came back to New Jersey after a couple years and I started long lining for tune in swordfish and from there I ended up purchasing a vessel which is called Defiance which I actually have and still operate today. On an average year we will produce a hundred thousand pounds of high quality sword tuna and mahi. This, this is actually marketed everywhere from Japan to the higher end restaurants in New York, Boston, all over. We fish year round. Um, Charter fishing is about seven months out of the year, and so I charter fish in the summertime and commercial fish in the winter. The big difference between commercial fishing and charter fishing is your motivation when you leave the dock. In charter fishing, you're just taking people out, recreational fishermen, for an opportunity to catch some fish. And you know, it's, it's about the experience um, and, and providing a, a, a good mess of fish. Commercial fishing is you don't get paid if you don't catch them. In charter fishing, you can have a slow day and you still get your day's pay. Some of the challenges being associated with being a professional fisherman is just being a professional fisherman. Just being a fisherman in general, whether you're a recreational fisherman or a professional fisherman, you still got to figure out how to catch a fish. When we go out into the Gulf where there used to be 20 boats fishing in an area, now there's 100 boats fishing in an area, and you as a captain have to be able to pinpoint a little more accurate where you want to be to actually catch fish as opposed to just a large area. Because when you're going 200 miles one way or 300 miles one way, it's pretty important to know where you're going. It didn't take long for me fishing to realize that the habitat was all about finding the right spot because 90% of the fish live in 10% of the ocean. So the sooner that I could find that out, I realized that we actually started doing much better. And the equivalent of looking for fish without having some way to narrow that search down is like using a barroom straw and going out in the parking lot and looking for a marble that is rolling around. Especially looking for mackerel, all schools of fish. Everything we chase is highly migratory. They don't live in one spot. So that's why you have to find the existing conditions. ROFS is an oceanographic consulting company that helps fishermen find fish using satellite and other data that um, makes it more efficient to looking and searching for fish particularly. Fishermen need tools and data products because the ocean's a big place. So if you're leaving the port, you can go either five miles offshore or, or up to 150 miles offshore, and you don't know that until you leave. There's no indication from the sky as a fisherman where the fish are likely to be, so each day it changes. So fishermen need to know whether they go left, right, or straight when they leave the port. So fishermen they either want to, in the case of recreational fishermen, to find out where the locations of fish are before they leave the dock. They want to save time. They're out there to, to play with the fish, catch fish, and bring them home. In terms of a commercial fisherman, they don't want to waste time in terms of fuel. If they're burning more fuel by going left an hour or two and they really needed to go right an hour or two, they will save themselves a lot of money by going directly to the fish um, using our service and the oceanographic information that we provide. NCEI data, along with other NOAA data, are used to develop fishing forecast tools, which are then used extensively by fishermen to help optimize catches. There are several NCEI data products that serve the fishery sector. Value-added providers also use these data to develop fishing forecast tools. NCEI also builds maps of the ocean floor, called bathymetry, to produce accurate and reliable information about shorelines and underwater features 
It's fish are associated with certain oceanographic features, particularly the bathymetry. Having that bathymetry is critical for our use in our, in our forecast and under, understanding where fish concentrate. When we have current pushing into certain of the bathymetry, then that typically results in a concentration of fish. If we have currents moving away from the bathymetry, then the fishing action dissipates. So bathymetry is, is really critical for us to have. The most successful win we've ever had was the Biloxi tournament last year. Um, we left out that Thursday afternoon just like everybody else. And like I said, you, you dream of finding the one spot that, that nobody's fished yet, that the fish or the blue marlin are there. And, and we pulled up to an oil rig and as soon as we started fishing, we caught one. Roths in, in that specific tournament helped me a lot by knowing which rigs I wanted to be at just because of the fact they were closest to that temperature break. In that tournament, monetarily, we won a little over $400,000, which is pretty incredible for the Gulf of Mexico to win $400,000. Programs like Terrafin help me be more successful doing my job as a charter fisherman or a commercial fisherman. It gives me real-time information, or near real-time, that I can assimilate myself. I use some of, the, some of my own experience with the information that I get from this program and uh, helps me make the decisions needed to have a successful charter and or commercial fishing trip. The information you get on where the water temperature breaks are at or uh, chlorophyll, the water clarity, make or break your entire trip. The great things about having these third party uh, companies that, that assimilate all this NOAA weather and, and sea condition information is it makes it easy and user friendly. It allows me to go to the right place at the right time. And how that translates economically is, you know, I have an annual fuel bill that's around in between sixty and eighty four thousand dollars annually. And when you can go directly where you need to be and you're not searching all over the Gulf of Mexico, which has happened at times, you know, you're talking 5, 10, 15 percent fuel savings. So you, if you can save 10 percent on $84,000 fuel bill, you're talking substantial amount of money. It definitely at least 40 to maybe 50 percent increase by using Mitch. And now I won't even leave the dock without looking, to be honest with you, without looking and deciding whether I'm going to go. It's just not cost effective. It's so tough to survive right now. The costs are high. With everything going on, weather and everything else, you really need to hedge your bet when you're going offshore. The retriever, which stocks two and a half million dollars a year, I would say maybe with without the information coming from, especially NOAA and Ross combined, I would say it would be down at least a million dollars. I get three reports, so that's $150. That $150 to help us pinpoint where we need to be fishing is really nothing compared to the $50,000 that we've already spent because anything that we can get will benefit us immensely. Any little advantage that I can get over the next guy is huge. The data that we have and our system that we have has really been developed around the NOAA data. The value to us is, is probably on the order of a quarter of a million to a half a million dollars a year. If we didn't have the, the CCOG NOAA data, we would not be in business. To think that we're going 300 miles into the Gulf of Mexico, that, that's halfway to Mexico. And, and we feel good when we leave and we're going that far. We know where we're going. We know there's an eddy there to fish or we know there's a break there to fish. Um, that would never have happened 20 years ago with the, the things that we had. Um, so the satellite imagery really has just made our business better. It's made it easier for us. Um, it's allowed us to catch more fish, bigger fish. Um, so we're really grateful for it.